acrylic paint. I've got white uh, acrylic paint. And I keep wanting to call it the wrong thing. My friend's husband, Mrs. Snow, her husband calls it Blickery Lick. And I always want to say that in my head. But it's really Blick Acrylic. But I probably just ruined that for you all too. So, I got water. You always need to have water when you're messing with acrylic paint. And I know I have a very hot commodity of um, some school toilet paper. School toilet paper works so much better than their brown paper towels because this is actually absorbent. And so when you're painting, you're going to need to be able to wipe off your brush from time to time. So I'm going to have that ready to go. All right. So this is how I do it, and other people might do it differently. What I like to do first, put a little bit of white. And I put some here in the middle. It's kind of hard to see because the light's so bright. And then I'm going to take some black. I'm going to do the same thing. A little bit here. 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 And a little bit here in the middle. Okay. So, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush wet, just because I like to work with my brush like that. One thing, uh, while I have this ready to go, when it, let's, if I had paint on this, don't take your brush and smash it like this to get the paint off, okay? Because that's going to end up making your brush bristles all like, and you can't, and they'll be all crusty and flared out, and you won't get that nice crisp line. So what I like to do is I take it, pinch it, pull, and then you maintain that nice straight edge of your flat brush. Okay, so here I have white, see if I can move the light a little bit, there we go. So we know we want just plain white at the beginning. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint that in there. Just straight white, nothing on it. This will be the very lightest part of my value scale. And if you go out of the lines, it's not the end of the world, okay? So I have paint on my brush now. I'm going to take this, pinch, pull. All right. I'm going to rinse my brush off. Same thing, pinch, pull. Now I'm going to come over here to the neighboring black. I'm going to go to the other end here. I'm going to put paint on here. Paint this, because this is going to be the very darkest area of your value scale. Okay, so I have the white and I have the black. Rinse your brush, pinch pull. Now for the fun part. So, I'm going to keep these white and black because you're going to need that later on. So I'm getting this ready to go so that, one, we make this, and after we figure this out, then we'll start labeling our portrait very lightly, which we'll get to. And then you'll keep all these paints for the duration of this project. All right, so I'm going to pull just a little bit of black. And there is no, like, set amount, okay? So you just add it and mix it until you are like, yep, that's it, or nope, that's not it. And just keep going back and forth with it. I just want this to be a little bit lighter. Before I start adding anything now to my little paper here, I want to try to get the colors the way I want them first. Okay. I'll try moving this light a little bit more. All right, so now I'm going to add a little bit more of this black to this one. Because we want the value scale to pretty much be exactly on your palette as well, in the correct order. Okay, so these two look too similar to me. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and sneak a little bit more black and mix it in there. And if you screw up and add too much black, well, you got white right there. Just add a little more white. And the reason I haven't started painting this on the actual paper yet is because I might have to wiggle waggle and go back and forth and go back and add more black or white to either or any of these different colors on the palette to get the right progression of light to dark. Okay, so now I'm going to come over here, I'm going to add a little bit more black. See, 
you that looks very similar to the one I just made too. So I'm going to try to wipe a little of this off, grab a little more. And I think I'm going to grab just a smidgen bit more. Mix it up really good. All right, so I'm going to use the toilet paper again. Rinse my brush. All right, now I'm going to add a better chunk to this one. Another thing to remember with this paint, it will not come out of your clothes or off the carpet or off furniture once it's dry. If you can catch it while it's wet, you can use a stain remover like Shout and that will help get it out. But once it's dry, it's on there forever. Alright, let's see, how's that looking? That's not too bad. Um, I might add it a little bit. Pinch, pull. I like to do that before I put my my paintbrush in the water, so that I'm not dirtying up my water too much by putting too much paint in there. And another thing, never share your paint water with your neighbor, okay? Because then their colors are going to get mixed up with your colors, and that's going to affect the way your painting turns out. Okay. So, next, I'm over here to the black. So, I am going to mess with the light, see if that helps. All right, now I'm going to add the white to the black. So this is going to be a pretty good chunk, I think. And I'll most definitely have to go back and get more. See how dark that is that you can't even tell I added the white at all. That's all right. We'll come get some more. And some more. And some more. This is really, really dark. In fact, I think I might add a little of this over here. So I have enough room to add more white. Like I said, this is just trial and error until you get the right color or value. And then I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, maybe I ought to add a little bit of this to this to kind of make it more subtle change. I think I like that. That turned out pretty good. Okay, now on to the next one. So I've got a little bit of gray there, but I know that's not near enough. So I'm going to add another chunk of white here. And some more. Okay, uh, let's see, I think that's a good, all right, so I'm going to wipe my brush again. All right, now moving on over here. This one's going to take a little less white, but still some white in it. I might have to squirt a little bit more on there, which is fine.
think I'm kind of happy with that one. I'm going to go on to this next one. And remember, we're going to keep this one straight white, and this one's going to be straight black. No change in the value. Okay, I think I'm fairly satisfied with the way those colors blended out. So, what I'm going to do now, clean my brush again. Rinsey rinse. Now, I've already gone through quite a bit of toilet paper because I just really like to have a clean brush. Okay, so I'm going to start with the lightest one. Which I already did the white, so I'm going to go the next one over. So this will be your number two. Alright. Rinse my brush again. Now I'm going to go get a number three. So one, two, Three. So sometimes if this gets complicated, you are more than welcome to label your palette with a piece of tape on each one, or you can even draw with pencil on it. All right, I'm gonna wipe it. See, now, right now this looks like a really big difference, and that's I might have to go back and change some of that, add a little more white in here, because that's a really big difference. So since I've already painted that, I need to wait for that to dry. So I'm going to mix this in there, and then I'm going to go wipe my brush. And then I'm going to go ahead and skip over here to the four. All right. Rinse. Wipe. Okay. I guess I am one of those people. I need to be the one to label this because I'm getting confused. Okay, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, it's really light on there. So you can kind of see where I put it on there. Just the numbers, right? So anyway. Back on to number five. So we're halfway. Should be at the middle tone between black and white. All right, moving on to number six. Number seven. Number nine. 